Thanks for joining me today. Instinctive Addiction Archery, I'm Jeff Phillips. Got a good one here for you today. And we're gonna be dealing with an all important issue. That's right, the anchor, your anchor. Okay, had a lot of guys I've been interacting with this week, uh, messaging back and forth, few phone calls with some issues, okay? I had one guy in particular, uh, getting everything set up, getting his shot process down. He's bare shafted his arrows. He's got them bare shafted, literally perfect, okay? He says, but for some reason, I am shooting about three inches, maybe four inches to the left every single time, okay? Well, once the bare shaft is done and the arrows are leaving the bow true and straight, they're flying true, at that point, it's on the archer, okay? There's nothing else that you can do unless you get your arrow back out of tune. Um, you can sometimes add a little more point weight and bring them over just a little bit. And I've got an older video on that called Curing Left Groups, okay? You can increase the point weight, which weakens the spine of the shaft enough that it will bring them around to the right if you're a right-handed shooter. Okay, but it only makes sense, guys, that if the arrows are perfect, if they bear shaft really, really good, that you should leave it alone, okay? The rest is on you. Shooting the bow after that point, hitting where you want to, that's all in your shot process. Okay, so what we figured out with this guy was a very simple thing, guys, very simple. He was shooting a tab, okay? Uh, there are lots of tab shooters. Now, I shoot a glove because I love the feel. I love the natural feel and I hunt with a glove and it's just like my, my bare hand other than it protects me, you know, from the string a little bit, but I can feel the string with this bare paw glove, okay? So, today's video is gonna deal with the all important thing called the anchor. That's right. Your anchor point affects everything it affects every single part of your shot it affects where you hit right and left as to where you're looking because in other words taking a slightly deeper slightly deeper into the face anchor point will naturally bring your impact to the right whereas if you have a loose as i call it a loose anchor that is somewhat out from the face a little bit you're going to tend a little bit left most of the time with your groups, okay? So your right and left impacts uh, are determined by how you anchor your bow, okay? Up and down the same way. You, your body will adapt to where you're looking and how you're shooting. If you are an instinctive shooter, you can adapt really easily to most anything, but if for some reason you're staring at a spot and you're shooting and all of your arrows are grouping left and they are bare shafted perfect, it simply means that you need to come in with your anchor a little bit tighter, okay? And that will cure it, plus the alignment of the upper body and pulling through that shot, okay? That's where most of it comes from. I'm gonna shoot a couple of times, guys, and I'm gonna show you what I do, how I actually anchor and my personal anchor, I shoot three fingers under now. I've shot split finger, three under. I've switched back and forth. I've shot both, and I still shoot split finger sometimes with bows that just want a split that are tillered that way. But I prefer three under because I just enjoy shooting that way. Now, when I come into my anchor, my mind says, feel the anchor. I don't think about hardly anything when I'm shooting, but that's one thought. Once I line up and I start drawing and tugging on that string, the thought that comes into my mind is get in my anchor. Well, that means that I'm waiting for that feel, that I'm gonna feel, I'm gonna feel this finger come in right under my cheekbone. If it's not under that and I don't feel that touch, I know I'm not there because I don't shoot a clicker, okay? So I wait for a good touch. Once I'm in that touch, and I do shoot quick, guys, but when I come in and I make that touch, my eyes are focused on what I want to hit. My head is down into the shot. I'm lined up. Everything's lined up. It feels natural. 
and I don't shoot until it feels right. Guys, and that's something you need to practice also, letting down. It's hard to do, but practice letting down if the shot does not feel right, because if it's not feeling right, it's not gonna be right. And you know it as soon as you release the arrow. As soon as you release the arrow, you know when that shot is right, okay? There's just, there's no two ways about it. So I'm gonna shoot it a couple of times and show you guys how I hit my anchor and how critical that it really is, okay? Here we go. Just like that. I feel it, I feel it in my face. I feel when I am at full expansion. When I've hit my anchor and I pull through that shot, I know it. Every time. It's it's a feel. It's a feel that you get. Okay? Whereas if I was to see like both of those are right in there. If there was a 12 ring on there, both of those are in there. Okay? Which I'm only like 18 yards. All right, easy shot. But I'm gonna purposely take a loose anchor looking at the same spot just like i normally would but i'm going to take a loose anchor not not get in here see if my air impacts left i'm not going to do this on purpose i'm just gonna i am gonna purposely not get into my anchor just to see how much it does okay here we go mm. i shot a little high i had no control I had no control. I shot a little high and a little left, maybe two inches, but I had no control. It was almost free string in the bow. I had no point of contact to really nail down. That's why your anchor is so important. You can't just pull anywhere and make a shot. You, you, you can't do that. You can never be accurate doing that. You can't just, just pull it some, somewhere out here and have no consistency. You cannot do that. You have to line up and come in to your anchor and get it in and look. You have to do that. And once you do, the shots are easy, guys. So I want you to take this to heart. If you're trying to be accurate with a recurve or a longbow, uh, a hill style bow, whatever it might be, you've got to learn to hit a consistent anchor point. You have to, you have to do that. Think about a compound shooter. Okay, I shot compounds for many years, competitive, everything else. And in compound shooting, you know, you're working with a release, but you still have, mine was always right here. I always brought in and I had this finger under my earlobe and this, this was my relaxed, my finger was against my face and this is where I gradually, gradually came into my release until it, until it went without me thinking about it. It's no different with traditional archery. You have to have an anchor that is settled, and as you just barely expand, it just explodes. It happens. The string comes off the hand. It's done. Done deal. So that's why it is so important, guys. It is extremely, extremely important. So if you're struggling with your left and right groups, Maybe, and maybe even up and down, just like that. I mean, there's no sense in shooting two inches high at 18 yards, but it was because I had a sloppy release, a sloppy placement. It wasn't locked. Uh, it's almost like shooting a gun. If you shoulder a gun and you shoulder it and you put your cheek on the stock and you get your head into it and you close your eye and you line the scope up and you squeeze that trigger, that thing is lined up. Well, if you was to just try to freehand it and hold it out and freehand it and line your scope up and pull the trigger, there's no telling what you would hit. You probably wouldn't even hit anywhere close to what you were trying to. It's no different with a bow. That bow is just like a machine. Imagine you are a machine shooting the bow. You have to make your body be just like a machine. And that includes bending down. When you bend down to take a shot from the waist in a tree stand position, completely different. That's where people short draw the bows really bad and cheat their, their release. They don't get near the draw. Let's say a deer comes in, he's right under your tree. And you get ready for the shot. You've got to expand through those shoulders and you've got to bring it back, man. You've got to get back in that anchor the same way. Even if you can't catch your bow, if you're having to shoot with the bow completely vertical, makes no difference. You're looking at your spot, 
and you come in, you gotta expand. You get instead of here, you gotta expand it. You gotta do that to get to get everything to be the same out of a tree as it is on the ground. Okay? So guys, I hope that's helped you. Pray that this will be a blessing to you. Uh, if you have any questions about this, uh, maybe you're a, a tab shooter that's struggling. Maybe you are. I don't know. Most guys don't, but there are definitely some that do. Uh, I highly recommend a very tight, good fitting glove that is like like your skin, that fits like your skin, like these, these bear paw gloves. Uh, a quality glove that you don't even really know you're wearing, that you can feel that string, feel the touch. I think it's critical, guys. I really do. And you'll usually you'll get a little bit more draw length out of your bow without any more effort. You'll just get a little extra draw, which makes a big difference. Big, big difference, especially with light poundage bows. So thank you, guys. God bless you. Goodbye.